What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Scratch Agency Podcast, hosted by Scratch Agents for Scratch Agents. My name is Stephen Turnbull, founder of T5 Insurance in Utica, New York. Straight off the boat from the Bahamas, Florida. He was traveling all over. Mr. Sean Fitzgerald from LAF Advisors is back. He's back in Long Island. How are you, sir? How was the big trip? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for that. I was, uh, you know, I think as most business owners can relate, I have a little bit of a hard time fully disconnecting, but it was good to, I felt like for the first time since I opened the agency, I did have a couple of days where it was just calmness and peace, you know, Mm, but like, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Clap it up, Jeremy. (laughs) But like, uh, yeah, I want that standing ovation. Um, But like, like anything else, I mean, after a couple of days, I do get a little antsy. You know what I mean? After like day three, I'm like, oh crap, I'm, you know, I have the fear of missing out. I'm, I should be growing my agency and uh, the bug, right. the bug kind of starts getting me, but it was a great time. Thank you, man. Well, there was a lot. That was the first vacation since you started the business and probably the last is the uh, family of three, right? That's true. Another That's one coming in August. Stuff. Exciting stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show for you today from Lexington, South Carolina. We are super excited to have Jeremy Powers on the podcast. Jeremy is the owner and founder of Powers Insurance Experts. Jeremy, how are you doing today? Thanks for taking the time to join us. Oh, hey, man, doing great. It's exciting to be uh, on this and to be able to help other agencies that are starting from scratch. Man, I wish I would have had this the day that I opened my agency. You and I both, you and I both. That's what we're trying to do is just give little nuggets in there and bring people on who have been through the journey. So why don't we start with your journey? How'd you get an insurance? And and then we'll go from there. Sure. Sure. So um, 10 year career with Allstate um, led to this. I was not an agency owner, um, just ran to, uh, offices and it was an incredible, but it just became to the point where I would honestly lay in bed at night and think this can't, at 29 at the time, I was like, I can't, this can't be the end of the journey. Like I can't have reached the, the top of the totem pole. And, and honestly, with some decisions uh, that carrier was making, I just didn't feel comfortable really with staying in that world. So I ultimately made the decision. Um, and I'm a very loyal person. It was tough to get into the, to get into the trenches and decide I wanted to be an independent agency. I was tired of looking from the sidelines and saying, I'm, you know, kind of being jealous if I'm now being honest of all the options they had. Um, and so it was, it was a quite a leap. You know, I was a single dad of two girls at the time. Um, and I had a mortgage of $1,500 and I had three grand in my bank account. And I took the leap of faith mm. on January 1st of 2020. And, um, Right. And then COVID happened, uh, but we're very blessed. We're a little over a uh, $3 million book. Now I speak in premium for being from all state. I'm still not the revenue guy yet, uh, but we're, we're completely organic. Uh, luckily we've never once asked a single person since I opened this office to be their agent. Uh, but we we've created a steady uh stream of organic traffic and i just tell everyone it's just because we're fun man we just try to be the sunshine we really try to love people and uh and through their insurance and uh, man it's just been such a blessing in our community to be able to to have so many people rally around us and help us get to where bills are paid and now we're growing and really trying to make an impact in the community so when you were at allstate were you just a producer or did you own an allstate agency I did not own an agency at all. I was a producer. So I started off at an agency um, and worked there for several years. My now ex-father-in-law at the time was said, hey, I don't like the medical world. Like, let's go open an Allstate together. So I kind of signed my life away that I was going to be a producer there. I was more of an office manager and no ill will. That's not the reason I left Allstate world or anything like that. It was just I, I didn't feel like I was able to be what I told people I wanted to be in my community. Mm -hmm. And ultimately an independent insurance agent really felt like they were actually able to be the superhero that their client needed. And so for me, that's the reason. Well, here's, here's the reason I asked that question for you. Like you said, single dad of two young kids, three grand in your bank account, it would have been easy to just go get a job as a producer in an independent shop. Oh, sure. You know, so why, why for Jeremy, was it owning your own independent agency? Yeah, I, I tell everyone you you have to be a little crazy and a little dumb to make to make decisions that sometimes work out, you know. And so for me, it it wasn't the matter. I was tired of being a producer. I was tired of having these ideas, and I was tired of wanting to see things come to life and maybe give to this charity or or be a part of this organization or do things a little bit differently. And ultimately, I didn't have to say so. And so ultimately, for me, I knew that I'm a strong man of faith. And so I just knew if I take this step of faith and I'm obedient, I'm going to be successful. And if I'm not, 
producer jobs are a dime a dozen. My mm-hmm. statistics show for themselves. I mean, I put out seventy, eighty thousand dollars a month in premium with Allstate. I was like, if I can do it there, I know that if I fail, I will have an opportunity. But it's it's about time that I just trust myself and and give myself a shot because I don't want to get to seventy years old one day and look back and say, man, what well, I wish I would have. I wish I could have. Uh, I I just wanted to take that chance and see where where I ended up. Yeah, no regrets, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that was one of the biggest reasons I took the leap the same around the same time you did. I was February 2020. Okay. And I remember clearly saying to myself, <laughs> if I don't do this and I'm like 60 years old, I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life, you know? So That's I, it. I, I completely, well, and I was, completely relate. And I was in the same thing four months before my wedding. And everybody told me mm. I was crazy. Why don't you just wait till the wedding's <laughs> over? And there's always going to be that next thing to wait for. Um, I have a friend, a good friend of mine recently that uh, had a nine to five job, started a side business as a home inspector. And then he started, you know, working four days a week at his job, three days a week at his job as his business was getting going. And we constantly had the conversation like, when are you going to go all in? When are you going to be full time with this new business you started? And Mm -hmm. I always told him, I said, the only time to figure it out is when you need to figure it out. And what a good story that you said there, Jeremy, of three grand in the bank account, two young kids. You had no other option but to figure it out at that point. Well, they say, everyone says, oh, your kids are so lucky. I, mean, I love, you know, and now I have a, a wife. I'm so happy. I have, a, I have a, a one-year-old son. So like, we're just a great, happy family now. But in that time, everyone would always say, man, your kids are so lucky. You're always so active. And this and I said, honestly, it's the opposite. Like I, I truly could have been at the bottom of a bar if I didn't have children just in all of my miseries and all of my life didn't go maybe the way I planned in certain areas but instead I had to provide Mm -hmm. it was it was like what have you done lately and I always woke up and told myself Jeremy you're leaving an invisible you behind every single day would you hire that guy next year and so ultimately for me, knowing that I was leaving an invisible me there, that's how I was growing my employment is there was going to be just a lot of me's until I could afford another person to, to deal with me uh, and all of my craziness. That was it. It was that if you don't show up today, there might not be a tomorrow. And so for me, that was almost the fuel. I think sometimes when you don't have anything, it actually cr- helps you actually amount to, I don't want to say amount to something, but to create something because there's no, you burn the ships. There's nothing to go back to. You you have to do it. If you start, I know agencies that have started with a hundred or two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars, and it's almost like they just take all the time in the world getting started because they don't have any real need for urgency. Yeah, yeah, you got to have that urgency. And I think if you have a family, there is definitely a little more. I mean, for me anyway, there's more urgency there because mm-hmm. my end goal is I want to make my family proud, right? That's right. And one of the ways I think I'm going to do that is by making my name. You know, hopefully that, you know, my name means something by the time yeah. I pass away and, <laughs> you know, I can kind of leave my mark, so to speak. But yeah, that that's the ultimate motivation there. But Jeremy, talk to me about, tw- uh, you know, you start the scratch agency. Mm-hmm. How do you, how are you generating business? How, how are you bringing new stuff in the door? So for me, the biggest ticket for me is I'm a big nerd when it comes to B&I, local networking, oh, just yeah. being the mayor of your own village. And so for me, it was... Um, you know, my joke is that I started, I joined the BNI group. There were, it was one forming from the beginning. I, this was a year before, a year or two before I went independent, but I was up against 10 other insurance agents. Here I am just a producer. I might be an office manager or whatever, but I'm just a producer. I'm up against nine other people. Like one of the insurance agents was like a local quarterback for our college that had just graduated college. And now he's, he's an insurance agent. You know, we're all, we're all what Tom Brady would have been if he wasn't successful, you know? So Mm -hmm. let's high five to that. Uh, um, but at the end of the day, it was just all this stuff. I, my joke is I had to shank someone in the back alley. Like, you know, it was crazy. I had to fight for that seat. But once again, I, I'm competitive. I like to have fun and I like to win. And so once again, when I'm up against 10 people, I said, you know what? I don't want to get to the end of this and find out I wanted to do it. And I came in second place. So I fought hard for that. And that has really uh, helped. You know, we're up for five years in a row for our best local agent uh, in our state paper and all of those things. And, and all of that has come from building an organic referral base within my community and then being active on Facebook pages and answering questions, never being a salesperson, but being an educator and be willing to help and provide value. And then people just want to work with you. I only have two mortgage partners. I'm not this guy out here with 15 mortgage partners. And that's how I have built this thing. Like literally 
by the grace of God, I'm a survivor. I have no clue what happened. Somehow it just all came together. And I am very, very thankful for that. What, <laughs> so, what, what kind of Facebook pages are you in? Uh, so, you know, I tell you, look for those community pages. Like for us, it's called Soda City Connectors. It's where everyone, because I'm in Columbia, you said Lexington, Lexington and Columbia are very close, but my agency's right here centralized in Columbia, South Carolina. And so what I did was join that group. And then I joined the Lexington group and the Irmo group and the Blythewood group, all the surrounding counties. And it's like, what's happening, Blythewood or all these different groups. And when people ask, hey, I'm looking for insurance or, hey, I need a plumber or, hey, I need a roofer. Well, guess what? I have a network of people. So I'm always going to be providing help. And it got it's to the point where I get an email at least once a month that said, hey, I was looking for insurance in this group and your name shows up more than the word insurance does. Mm. I click on one post. There's 63 comments and like 14 to, to 20 people have mentioned your name. And, and so I just wanted to reach out to you. So it, it it's a slow roll. It's like that snowball at the top of a mountain. You just have to start and you have to be intentional and it can't be for selfish motives. You really like B and I, the rule is givers gain. I just tell people live that intentionally. You reap what you sow. So just get out there and plan every day. If you're out there planting and watering, man, whenever it's time to harvest, you're going to have so much fruit. You don't know what to do with it. And you have to hire someone to help you to collect it all. That's awesome. So it's funny that kind of ties into my next question I wanted to ask you, which I think would help newer agents as well is like, what do you think your key to networking effectively effective is? Is it more? Is it more just being mm -hmm. yourself? And like you said, planting seeds and waiting for the right time? Or, or what, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, we're very blessed, you know, in, in our communities, like a lot of times, and, and when I bring someone in, I say, don't ask, like, just be out if you can be the sunshine on a cloudy day people want to do business with you because think about it if, if it's cloudy and it's raining and and the sun starts peeking out you know you 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 instantly want to turn towards it and see like oh what is that what is that like like our name is i hate that i put experts in our name years later uh, but at the time it was it's it's pie our website is choosepie.com and people laugh like i'm on the phone with a lender earlier today and they're like i love your website name and and, and i mm -hmm. my goal to my thing that i tell everyone is if you can get someone to smile you just broke down the barrier to being a salesperson because we're not we're educators we just happen to get paid what we're worth you know most teachers don't we do if, if we go to work and work hard every day, but it, my goal is just to make someone smile. So the video proposal that we make for every quote, every single quote, I tell the same two or three jokes. It's like a science now. And, and it's literally designed just to, just to bring a smile. Because when you think about us, I don't want you to think about a bill or a policy. I want you to think about that person cares about me and they're protecting what matters most to me. That is what sells insurance. Not you just have the cheaper price. And if you're so focused on the value and when I became, an independent agent I, I i crazily enough i went from caring about so much about value and i started thinking i had to be the cheapest and that is something that's somewhere you don't want to find yourself just because you have 12 options doesn't mean you have to be the cheapest don't forget where you came from because it was one carry you had to sell on more than price alone and that honestly to me is what can make you a successful independent agent you did hitting so much there because i you know we've had a few conversations before this point too and you know um, I'm the same as you just involved in the community. It's all referral based and different things. And I told people when I first started in 2016 at my family agency, I just infused myself in as many community events as possible and found what work. And I've kind of broken it down to three different silos. I've got my BNI group. That's very intentional. Like what you just talked about. This is what I'm looking for. How can we make relationships? How can we build referral partners? All that I've got the rotary club that is good for my community not expecting business out of it, but does business come out of it? Yes. Right. And then I've got the chamber where it's more of here's who I am if you ever need it, but it's less intentional. And I've found focusing on those three silos and seeing what works is so powerful from trying to do it this way as the community referral based model. So I, I think that makes complete sense. Everything you said. Yeah. All right, Jeremy. So let's jump into the team. What I think one of the most powerful things is about the questions we get from people that listen to the podcast is like, what is that next step? When you start the agency and it's just you, it's easy to just forget about processes and get through everything, right? But it's kind of a, a scary big mountain of maybe that first account manager or that first salesperson. So walk us through your process of, 
you know, what the team looks like today, uh, how you develop that and what those stages kind of look like? Sure. No, I think this is a great question because it's so easy. I, my joke to people is that there's two times in life I don't feel I feel like an alien. Uh, number one is I have a Tesla and I love my Tesla. It doesn't mean I'm rich. I mean, I think I always spent 30 bucks a month on electricity. You know, I have no clue how much gas costs, so it makes me feel like an alien because I can't, you know, tell you could really bet me a million dollars today and I couldn't tell you, you know. And so the number two is I have no clue what it feels like to be an employee anymore. I spent so many years of my life as an employee feeling like I was being taken advantage of. It's the whole reason I ended up leaving to start my own agency. And it was no fault of theirs. It's just the way I felt, um, you know. And so when I took a month off, uh, you know, because I actually kind of stopped in December, I took December off. One of the things that I did was actually wrote down everything that it felt like to be an employee because I knew that one day I probably wasn't going to remember what that felt like. And although I thought I knew everything, I was under the realization that I probably didn't. And so I go back to that list because I think it's so important that we always remember where we came from and that how important producers are. I tell my team all the time, listen, like if this agency starts to go south, I'll be the one working at Lowe's. You'll, you guys will still be here. Like I'm the least important person in this agency. You are one of the ones that carry the torch. And really, and my job is to, my job is to stand just like this as high as I can and to put you here and to help you see heights that I never saw possible. And I think that when you, when you lead an organization in a way that really brings your team up and lifts them up, people will always do more than is expected when they feel appreciated. And I believe so often we forget that and we think, oh, let's go to the golf course or let's go do this or let's go that. But I've got a team now and they, they now feel like, wow, like they are so distant from the agency, but I'm here putting in all the work and I'm not appreciated. So number one is check yourself. You've got to constantly look at, like, am I being a good example uh, to this team? And so we've grown from no, no one um, to five and a half, I say. The half is a wife is amazing. She's been able to leave the, the education industry, and she's now a stay-at-home mom, but she does all of our document signatures. So we use PandaDoc. And so when someone makes a sale, we have a process of you upload all the documents here in Teams, and then she's going to go out and get all those documents signed. She kind of keeps us organized because that's not who I am in any way, shape, or form. And uh, so it's been beautiful to have that. But as we've grown, um, it, it started with me. The first thing I did is I used agency VA, and I hired a VA. And I spent about 40 hours in that first week really just – teaching that VA everything. I love agency VA and they'll tell you, we give you fully trained virtual assistants. It's not true. They, that, that, that virtual assistant needs to learn who you are. They need to learn the culture of your agency, how, how you expect things. And so don't hire a VA and, and treat them like a, a software. They are a real person that needs to feel like they're a part of your organization if you mm -hmm. actually want to see success. Um, and so that's what we did first. And then from there, uh, we quickly grew. I had a producer very quickly. I had a guy that went to church with me. And I told him for two years, man, you would make a great producer. You need to quit being a mechanic. You've got all the all the stuff. And he would never listen to me until the day I opened up my own agency. And he was like, ring, ring. Hey, Jeremy, remember you told me um, to, to quit my job and to do this? Well, hey, I did that. I quit my job. I just went and passed my insurance exam. And so I just am ready to come work for him. I'm like, whoa. You know, let me send you over to here to this place that can afford you. I can't. And he said, listen, man, I don't want any money up front. Just give me an opportunity. I'll make commission only. I didn't do this to work for them. I did this to work for you. And that was mm. one of those God taps on my shoulder because I am such an accountability person. If I know that it matters to you, I'm going to work harder. So having my children who needed me and having this now employee who needed me very early on, guess what? Jeremy had to go to work, whether he wanted to or not. Jeremy had to go to work, and it's because I'm a people pleaser at heart. And so I would tell you, don't don't be scared to bring someone in if it's actually going to enhance what you're doing, but be willing to find someone who's willing to put skin in the game like you did. Maybe it's not money up front, but it's they don't want they don't need the salary up front. They just want to come to work with you, learn and grind, and then see that themselves build something beautiful. Yeah, Jeremy, it's clear to me that you're a good leader, man, and that's why that kid gravitated towards you right and that's why when he saw you open up your agency he's like oh i want to be a part of that you know and it goes back to what you that. said earlier i could tell just from this conversation we've had you're very energetic you always got a smile on your face and man that alone attracts people you know and not everyone has that and that's a really important thing it motivates other people it puts other people in a good mood and you are helping yeah. other people which is your goal 
So well, here's the I thing. Mean, here's the, here's everybody the most, wins in that situation. The most powerful thing of that, and I can't wait to do this, and I know, Sean, how many times have I told you this? I can't wait to sit down with my first employee and be like, you are going to be my first concern because this business would have not been here if I didn't feel the way that I want to make you feel, right? And I've told my story a little bit on here with the family agency, and it wasn't that I was being treated in any you know bad way or whatever. There was sure. just constraints and different things that I felt my voice wasn't heard in different things. So be able to sit down and say to your employees, Jeremy, you're never going to feel this way. And to write that down is even, even more powerful to say, oh, yeah, yeah this is why, you know, oh, or and should, like you said, check yourself. Stop being this yeah. way because right here in writing four years ago or whatever, you were feeling this exact way. And I, I mean, that's that's powerful. So um, well, what's it, crazy, though, is I'll, I'll add on to that really quick. What's crazy is today I feel like I'm taken advantage of. I feel like it's always doing things on the company's time or, you know, not 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 to say that I am by any means. But it's just so funny how I used to feel like I was being taken advantage of. I still feel like that most times. It's so insane, and I think that this is something people need to hear. We're all way more interested in us than we are anyone else. Let's mm. just be completely transparent. So your prospects, they're way more interested in themselves than you, so talk about them. Your employees, they're way more interested in themselves about you, so you want to appeal to them. You want to be someone who can build a true culture in your agency because that's vital in 2023. Be focused on them. Be, be focused on them being a part of their family. Like I tell my people, when you check out of work, check out. Go home. The whole reason we're building this is for our families, right? So then why are you going to leave your family at home wishing they knew where you were and you're still building this business? Isn't it for them? Like, don't build this business and, for, and, and they forget who you are. You know what I mean? So it's I think it's so vital that we understand that this is our baby. The best we can ever get our staff to believe is that they're an aunt or an uncle. They're never going to love this business like it's their baby. And we can't, if we expect that on them, it's impossible. I'm sorry, but if their kid and my kid are in the front of, about to get hit by a bus, they might love my kid, but they're going to save theirs first. So why should I expect them to treat my business like it's their baby? I can't. I, my joke is an uncle or an aunt. That's the best you're going to get because they love them. They'll have fun. They'll do everything, but it'll never be their baby. It never but will. It, and everybody listening to this, rewind that about a minute and listen to Jeremy's wording. When he's talking to his employees about we, our, we're, we're, we're building this for our families. Like those little changes of just shifting the way that you're talking to your employees make the biggest difference that you won't even remember. And, and, and I can speak on that with not having employees because I was an employee, right? That felt mm -hmm. these certain senses. Um, Jeremy, touch on your wife being in the agency. It's interesting. Sean and I were having a conversation about this because I started to talk to my wife about, hey, do you ever think you'd be interested in, uh, you know, when we are blessed with a family down the roads, do you ever think you'd be interested in working part time for the agency and being mm -hmm. a stay at home mom and type of thing? So it's funny you bring that up because uh, Sean and I were talking about that this morning. But how did that come about? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it was not my wife loved being a teacher, lo absolutely loves it. And she worked at a school where children just didn't really have a chance. I mean, it was it was so sad. Some of the things that she would come home talking about. And honestly, when we first met, um, you know, she was my children's Sunday school teacher. You know, it's so great how um, these things happen. But she's always loved education. And as we got to know each other and as she started to realize, like. You are a teacher. Like, and I would say it to her, but she didn't believe it. She just always, you know, she thinks insurance, MLM, all this, that, and the other, you know, everyone's just trying to get something out of you. But as she saw the way we took compassion with our customers, the way that we wouldn't settle to sell them state minimum limits or to do this or do that. And as she started to learn about something, she started to kind of get excited. Like, I actually understand this. And like, I I'm so proud of like what you do. I'm proud of this business. And, you know, ultimately it was just a decision that we had of, hey, we want, to be able to really take advantage of, of that time with your children. And, and some people can't, they're not in that position. There's no harm, no foul, but we wanted to, to be able to take advantage of that position. It was very difficult because you lose health insurance. That's, you know, that's one thing that comes with being a teacher that's great is health insurance. Uh, but we had to, once again, be constantly willing to take a leap of faith and say, listen, if this is what we want, it, it doesn't have to be pretty. I always say, I don't want a penny more than God's designed me to have because I don't want to become who I'm not. And so when I'm sitting here saying, well, we're going to lose these things. Well, if I'm acting in obedience, guess what? It's all going to come back to me. I just have to keep being obedient and 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 keep doing things for the right reasons. So I would say with a spouse coming into the agency, you know, it we know so much and we think we know so little, 
we have to be careful not to get snippy with the little things. Mm. And I would just say that's one of the small things. Like my wife didn't know how to do this or know how to do that. I would find myself like, are you serious? You don't know how to do that? Not just because I was busy. You have to understand that if someone's going to come into your organization that you have that intimate relationship with, that they have to be a part of the team. You can't act differently or, you know, have this, that, you know, they have to be a part of the team, but also you have to understand that you can't put these unrealistic expectations on them or that's going to create some, it's going to create some harm and some ill will. But I love, my wife comes to every conference that I go to typically where our, it's a family thing. There's Grant Bottom has a book called Work Life, Work Life Harmony. And I believe that's so true. My kids talk about the business. My daughter talks about, hey, how's Alan doing? Or how's Amber doing? Or how how are things like, we talk about business, not like it's this taboo thing, but in a good way. We talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. And man, it is so awesome to go home and talk about it. And 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 we understand the language that's being spoke, uh, but we're not harping on it. It's just a part of who we are. It's, it's the DNA of our family. And I would say if Everyone can't do it, but it has been an absolute blessing for our family uh, to be able to take this task on. But I have to once again check myself more often than not because if someone's making an error, it's me. And I want to say pride, but it's like if I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm a pretty dumb guy. And if I can do it, like anyone can do it. And I have to check myself and realize, Jeremy, you're 13 years in. He's a year in. You're 13 years in. She's a year in. And it's just really having grace and being willing to step aside and, and put your ego to the side for a moment. So you said your wife handles all the e-sign stuff? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. That's right. She said she promised she would never sell a policy, but she I coach like five insurance agencies now. They're mainly captive agencies. I still have such a heart for captive agencies. Uh, but her and a few of my clients are trying to get like, write a book. I'm going to give you one page and just say, go to work. You know, but she told me if I sell a policy, you have to write a book. And I was like, yeah, you'll never sell a policy. Then crap, she sold her first <laughs> policy. So so now I'm like, my timeline has started ticking. But she doesn't like that. She loves the back end. She loves tying up all the loose ends. And, man, what a blessing. We're different. But, man, if we trust each other, man, it's a beautiful thing. Because when I hand something off to her, she's like, hey, you talk to them. You got them to say yes. And I'm like, yes, you're willing to do all the boring stuff. Because I don't know about you guys, but the moment I sell a policy, I'm like, wait a second. I have to. I have to get your routing an account number. I have to I have to bind all this stuff. I have to get doctors. Like, wait a second, are you sure you want to sign up? So, like, are, are you really sure? You <laughs> yeah, well, let's dive into this. Because, and I'm going to pass yeah. it off to Sean after I kind of introduce sure. this because Sean and I were talking about, <laughs> again, talking about this today. By the way, yeah. Sean and I have realized we talk about eight to ten times a day. And the fact that he left me <laughs> for a week to go on vacation with his family, how dare him? He's not allowed to do that anymore. I know. Come on, uh, man. But, uh, but we talked about like how every business needs to operate like a car dealership. And I say that in the sense of the same guy that sells you the car does not vacuum it to get it ready for you to pick it up, does not make sure the oil's in it, is, does not set up your financing. Very rarely, mm -hmm. right? You are passed along and you have a great experience with somebody who is very good at what they do, knows how to handle you. And, you know, Sean can share his recent experience on that and what he's trying to do with his processes. But to your point, Jeremy, of like, okay, I I'm on to the next policy. Like I sold this. I don't yeah. I don't care what your routing number is as long as it comes through, right? And then yeah. you can hand it off to your team member there to make sure it's taken care of. Sean, you want to expand on that? Yeah, I mean, huh, here we go, bringing up Billy Williams again. But I had a call with oh, Billy today and it, and it was just like, "Hey, I'm trying to make the onboarding process as efficient as possible." For, and this is mm -hmm. home and auto specifically. And I kind of had the way I was doing it now. I went through it with Billy. And you know how Billy is. Billy's like, hey, we're going to start from the beginning. A call comes in. Who takes the call? You know, you collect the data. Where does it go? Right into Agency Zoom. From Agency Zoom, it goes into the PL radar, right? And we're walking through all the steps. And what I came to realize is I have my producer doing a little more than he should be doing, right? Like he's doing the, he's sending out the DocuSign mm -hmm. when he really shouldn't be doing that. I can have my VA do that, right? He's doing some of the quoting on the front end. He really shouldn't be doing that. I can have my VA quote, right? And be a little bit more hands-on. This way it frees him up to do other tasks. So again, it, God, every podcast this comes up is like having the process and procedure for the on customer onboarding process specifically, right? Yeah. Well, one thing hey. I will add to that though, is you have to be careful though. This is it's beautiful. What you're saying is absolutely beautiful, but what you have to make sure of is the janitor is treated the same way as the CEO. Bingo. Is that because when your team gets into this mindset of like, oh, that's not my job, like I'm mm -hmm. a producer, 
you know, I am the, the, the king of the of the ranch and this person is doing the grunt work. I, yep. I think that you just have to do a great job of celebrating and, and helping everyone know no matter what position you play, the great people plan. that keep it are just as good as the people that bring it. And, and, and if you can help make sure of that, man, that is absolutely vital because you just don't want to create this stigma of like, I'm better. I'm better than, wait, totally. they're, they're gone today. I'm better than that. And I think that people need to know that. Luckily, you guys get it. But I think so often we do these things and we don't realize it. But Greg, Greg, Roche, Greg Rochelle is like my favorite like leadership guy. He's amazing. And he always talks about organizations never lead towards ease. They always drift towards complexity. And I think that as long as we understand that, what you're saying is so true. But just valuing people, no matter what seat they have on the bus, every seat's designed for a person for a reason. Yeah, and I think um, I'm I'm honestly not upset with I he had my producer specifically had no prior insurance experience, so I actually want him to learn how to mm -hmm. quote right. So, but now that he's very efficient at it, I feel like it's okay to pass the responsibility on to somebody else. So I think everyone's situations, you know, obviously it's a little bit yeah. different, but I yeah. think that process makes it way more efficient and makes the agency way more efficient once you get it in place and have the procedures written out. Um, Especially if you have people that go through it and you level up because it's like they now appreciate like my newest rep, yeah. you know, he lost a job. He's a great friend. I really felt a calling to bring him in, even though it put us a little bit in the red again, I felt that calling. And so I did. And so, you know, he's, in that customer service world. I don't think that's where he'll end up, but when in a year or two from now, when he becomes a full producer, he's gonna, he's not gonna not understand all the hard work that goes into retention and service and endorsements. And, and like, literally I tell my endorsement and my service team, you're more important than the producers in my world, mm -hmm. because I can lose all my producers and I'm still here and we're going to be just fine without you. I literally am like, who wants to buy my business? Like, because I yeah. cannot do what you do. Yeah. So I, I, let's back up just a little bit because I want to. How many years are you in? Me with the scratch with the scratch agency. Yeah, three, we're three, a little over three years. Okay, old a little now. over three years old. And how many team members again? Oh, five and a half. Five. Okay, so let's go back and uh, we 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 made it about halfway, and then we went off on a tangent. I want to go mm -hmm. back and walk through. So you got the VA. And then mm -hmm. when your first producer came on, talk to us about the evolution to two year five and a okay. half right now. So he started as a 10 and 1099 and I very, as quickly as I could became a statutory W2. And that means I pay his taxes or sales taxes, but I also can hold him accountable. Uh, and, and I think that's very important because without a, at least for me, I believe the three keys to life are discipline, accountability, and intentionality. Those are, you live by those three things and man, everything's at your fingertips. But I had to say, listen, I'm going to pay your taxes, but now you're accountable. We're going to have meetings. We're going to talk about it. We're going to role play. We're going to do all these things. And so I had one producer. Um, we then added another producer um, to our uh, agency. And so we're two producers at that point in time. We have our VA. Then my VA goes away. I bring in my, my wife comes in at the same time I bring in by the grace of God, a 10 year nationwide vet because my, I love my marketing rep so much that guess what they do. And I treat them so well that guess what they do when somebody's not happy at their job, but they're a great producer. They say, Jeremy, you should call Jeremy. And then I've got this mm -hmm. amazing producer that comes on. She now leads my, my customer service division and she's so smart, so talented. And, and we've given her the ability to love what she does and love coming to work. So now we've got two people in service. We've got two producers and myself, and we've got my wife at home. And then we just added Alan because we're, I don't know about you guys, but every single person's policy is increasing by 300% right now. And so we are just in, if we've got 10 renewals, we're calling 12 people. We don't know who the yeah. other two are, but we're calling them, you know? And so we are so busy that, before I wanted to let someone get so stretched thin that they started thinking about is, is insurance really for me, I tell everyone, you better invest before you prepare. Like, I, you better hire someone before you're so busy because it doesn't matter how good yeah. you are. If you can't keep up, you suck. I'm going to say that one more time. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you can't keep up, you suck. Three people thought you were great, but the seven other people that needed you said, where was he? Where was she? Yeah. And so you have to invest before that, you, when you hire someone and all of a sudden that bill's there in front of you, guess what? You're going to produce. You haven't failed yet. You're not going to fail. You're going to find a way to win. 
And, and that that's what I would just tell you is take that leap of faith. We've done it time and time again, and it's worked. We're just dumb enough to do crazy things, and it works. You know, and so we're now that team of five and a half, like I said, because I don't want to say, like, and really we're, you know, Garnet, my number of producer, he's a stay-at-home dad. You know, he writes maybe two policies a month now just because that's what he felt called to do during the season. His wife, she makes a good living. And, and, I, and I give him that ability. Hey, man, you, you do that for your family, and we'll be right here ready when you're back. Um, and Lyndon, he's building what's called Phantom Equity. Chris Paradiso, my Billy Williams, is, um, is he helped me build out the structure. My buddy's 10 years in claims, and he left that industry, and he's now building our commercial book of business because he has a really great expertise on how claims work. And so he's building up to actually get equity in the business. And so he does, he could leave tomorrow and he's done nothing. It doesn't matter that he's built up a $600,000 book so far. It would be nothing until it gets to a certain point. But because he could easily open up his own agency tomorrow, we created an opportunity for him not to go do that, but for him to get a part of what we're building as a team. Listen, rocket ships weren't made to go to the moon alone. That's the reason there's a team of astronauts. OK, it's lonely at the top by yourself. Don't think that you need to be this dictator. Offer people the opportunity so that you can have a team full of many owners versus a team full of you being a dictator and everybody looking for a chance to exit stage left. Oh, it's funny. Stephen and I would talk a little bit about this subject earlier today that whenever you're talking to someone that's maybe interested in getting in the insurance space, maybe they want to work for you. Right. Knowing the questions to ask to see what type of personality they are, to know what kind of structure would be right for them, right? Maybe somebody wants a security and they'd rather make 50,000 a year with benefits. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody wants to, you know, get what they're worth and they'll, they're willing to do a hundred percent commission and they're younger and they don't have a lot of expenses. Maybe it's a stay at home dad. I mean, there's so many different issues, yeah. but I think as, as a good leader, it's good to know in your head, kind of, kind of the book we're reading, Stephen, right? And your next five moves knowing ahead right. how to handle those situations when things come by, right? So you can kind of, you know what questions to ask and you get real savvy and you can kind of answer them on the fly. You know That's what I mean? That's the crazy thing. It all comes down to communication. Yep. It just comes out of communicating with your Asking the staff, right questions. Communicate with your staff. Like, like you said, ask the right questions. Like Jeremy's saying, be honest with them. We're building this, all that mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, it just all comes down to yeah. communication. Well, there's two keys that I'll share with you guys. And everyone's struggling with hiring right now. We get three or four requests a week for a job. I mean, it's insane. But I'm going to share with you my two keys that I think anyone can walk out of this here today and do. Number mm -hmm. one, anytime someone's going to come onto your organization, go ahead and buy 15 disk assessment tests. Have them take the disk assessment because you are going to be able to see from that and explain to them. This is there's no perfect test. I want you to be transparent and honest with yourself when you're answering these questions because we want to make sure we put you in the right seat for this chip. What's great about a DISC assessment is I'm a 97I. That means I love to speak from stages. I love to inspire people. I love to, to, to be passionate about what I'm talking about. But I scored a three on a C. That's processes and scheduling and why I'm five minutes late to our recording because – I, I, I'm not in control of that. That's my weakness. So guess what? My first customer service person I hired, they were a 90 C. They were my weakness, but they think I'm a hero because I take all the hard calls and I think they're a hero because they love doing my service work. And man, we're a team. We're doing great. And so invest in this, but here's number two, and this is my secret sauce, guys. So this is something you can do today. Go and look at all your community Facebook pages and look for insurance. And every single time that someone asks for an agent, go look at those agents. Go look and see who owns their book and who's a producer. Because if they're being recommended on a regular basis, guess what? They're probably good at their job. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that it's going to recommend a crappy agent? Well, become their friend. Like their posts. Celebrate their successes. Always post, I always post to how much I love my team and how much we're doing so many great things and how I'm so inspired by my team. And guess what most agents aren't doing? They're not talking about their team. They're talking about their yacht. They're talking mm. about their country club. And so when this person sees that you're liking their posts, so you start showing up in their feed and you're always posting about how much you love your team and your funny memes and all the stuff, people think it's for business is honestly the number one recruiting tool that I have is my social media. And so these people come to me and they say, hey, like, can we have lunch? Can we do this? The send out card, Stephen, that you and I talk about, but they have a great month. Hey, I want to send you something. Man, congratulations on that. I never once asked them, can they come work for me? 
but I build a relationship to the point where they're like, one day they wake up and say, why the hell am I not working with that guy? Mm. And they come to me. And so that's secret sauce. If somebody's, if you're letting South Carolina people listen to this podcast, let's cut that geographically off. Yeah, well, yeah we'll and put I'm up the geo fence. <laughs> that's it. No agent, no agency could not do that. Cost you zero dollars to be nice and to go do some research and build build your producers. Amen. You, it's you've done a uh, again. This comes with your leadership quality, I believe, Jeremy. You've built. I can tell you've built a great culture over at your agency, and I just wanted to share this with the audience real quick. If you haven't listened to the Dabo Sweeney and Ed Milet pod, they had an episode together where they talk about building a culture for for Clemson, uh, the college football team. It is one of the best episodes I've ever listened to. So just go on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and pull that up because it talks all about building, how they basically turn that organization into a family atmosphere. It, it sounds just like what you're talking about. And I like hate this. it because I'm a Gamecocks fan. That's our rival <laughs> school, people. I'm like, why the heck is sorry, he so likable? No, it's all good. I'm just like, no, dude, the guy's so likable. He's uh, he's such an incredible leader. It's uh, That podcast is absolutely worth listening to it i think guys that's what's so special is it doesn't cost a penny to be nice no. it doesn't cost a penny to build it's hard but guess what you could do you can just download an app that creates random reminders and you can just say be positive like i have my five like people do the 90 hard i have my seven day hard that i do every week it is and it literally is lift three people up a day whether it's in my bni group it's in my community or it's my team i'm going to i'm going to give kindness three times in a day and when you start investing it's not it's like a muscle when you go to the gym and you keep working out, all of a sudden you wake up and i should be talking about that because i need to get in the gym but at the end of the day you you see three months down the road people just naturally want to work with you they want to they want i have people that call me jeremy you couldn't help me a year ago can you please be my agent now what who does that who who who, who calls and says hey i've been waiting for the opportunity to get my renewal to say will you please be my agent again yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, and it's not anything about who I am. It's so possible. You just have to be intentional. I'm so thankful uh, to the Lord that I am naturally intentional, but with that intentionality, I'm so bad at so many other things. I'm, I'm a horrible leader in the sense of forcing repetition to make you successful. Like I'm going to charge everyone up to get ready to charge hell with the water pistol, but I'm going to forget to bring the water and I'm going to forget what time we're going. So you got to come <laughs> by and pick me up if we're going. You know, I'll, I'll get us excited. So I know my weaknesses and I think that it's okay to have weaknesses, operate in your strength, fire for your weakness and make that person feel so appreciated because they are a huge part of your agency's success. Yeah. Jeremy, I see a lot of myself in you as we've talked about before, but I actually had that today, uh, a new po auto policy that I brought on and they called him like, finally, I'm a part of the crew, this and that. I was like, wow, wait till you see how much it costs. You know, we made a joke about it, but he's like, no, he's like, and it was from a previous uh, previous life of mine. And they're like, I've, I've been seeing what you want to do. I want to be a part of it. They they even didn't have to, but they even offered, I don't care if it's yeah. more, I'm going to be a part of what you're building, mm -hmm. all this stuff. And, you know, I tell people, similar to what you said, I tell people it comes down to two things for me, doing the right thing and doing your job. If you do the right yep. thing every time and you do your job every time, it's, it's going to come back. You're going to be successful. You're going to have those opportunities. You're going to have the people in our space that are saying, here's my renewal again. Take another look at it, whatever it is. So, uh, Jeremy, I could talk until the cows come home here, but um, <laughs> we'll look to wrap this thing up. We ask everybody the same question, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what your answer might be. But if tomorrow morning you were to wake up and you're starting over from zero, what would you do differently? with uh with your new agency i think it goes back to that processes and uh, procedures i think i would have started our podcast from day one even though people told me to wait uh because that's been an instrumental thing with our, our purpose over profits podcast of getting the right business leaders in to keep me motivated and keep me accountable that people are doing things the right way so don't you don't need to sacrifice um that's number one number two it would have been right everything because you have to feed the kids, but but set a date where you're going to look at it and you're going to change those rules. Because everyone says, what are your top three things? Oh, well, don't write bad business. Listen, you've got to write business until, until the bills are paid, and then you can start to change things. So I'm not saying just sucker people or write bad stuff, but you can be everyone's agent, but you need to create a, a date and time where you revisit that 
and you need to start becoming the business that you created to mm-hmm. enjoy, not a glorified bill collector. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it's setting real deadlines, but then it's also having processes and procedures because much like you are today, you're like, why do I really need processes? It's just me. I, I, when I have a team, I can create it all and, and do it all then. Dude, you're going to wake up one day and you've got a team of six like I do. And you're like, shit, like, excuse my language, but it's like, mm-hmm. wait a second. When did this happen? Like life just flew by and all of a sudden now, every time I want to make a change, it's like moving the, it's like moving this huge chip. whenever right now, you, if you can get those things done and you can invest in the, you can invest, man, that's huge. And the last thing is take care of your body. I, I was, I put on 30 pounds and a lot of gray hair the day I opened this agency because I thought I would needed to build this business, but the mission dies with me if I don't make it. So now I'm trying to focus on me again. And so mm-hmm. just don't lose focus on taking care of yourself. Those, those are a lot of things, but uh, that, that right there to me would, 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 my agency would be double what it is now, but who cares what size we are? It's a difference that we're making in our community. And man, that's, that's the most exciting part. I love it. Absolutely love it. Jeremy, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, um, certainly uh, talk about the podcast too, but where's the best place to reach out to you if you want someone wants to connect or just follow your journey? Um, I would say, you know, Purpose Over Profit podcast is a great, um, a great mission for us. And uh, obviously, you can go learn more about our history, our agency, and, and, and one of the episodes where we talk about us. But other than that, I'm avid on Facebook. I don't know how to use TikTok or Instagram or any of all that craziness. Uh, but I, I am a Facebook guy. So you can find me on Facebook. Um, and, and please do. Like, I... I am so thankful to the people that have given to me. Uh, nothing I do is my own. Um, I just listen to a good idea and implement it. So if I can be that for someone, man, that it's what a blessing to be able to be that for an agency because I, I know what it feels like and I want to see you succeed. So if I can help in any way, please reach out and I'd love to do so.